game. Time has run out as Buck Flutie scrambles around looking for a man downfield. He throws the ball. He's got a touchdown, Boston College. I don't believe it. They win the game. The pass, the most feared weapon in college football. In 1906, the forward pass was legalized. Even so, failure to complete a throw resulted in a 15-yard penalty and the loss of a down. Few coaches were willing to take the risk. The pass gained national attention in 1913 when Notre Dame met Army. Irish quarterback Gus Dury and N. Newt Rockney teamed up through the air to beat the cadets that day, 35-13. The forward pass was now recognized as an offensive weapon. It was not until after the war that the Southwest Conference became known for its aerial circus. While everybody else concentrated on running the ball, SMU coach Ray Morrison introduced a high-powered passing attack. Then came a scrawny, thin-legged kid named Sammy Baugh, followed by 5'6 Mighty Mike Davy O'Brien. Both quarterbacks starred for Texas Christian in the late 1930s. The Alabama Crimson Tide featured the H-Boys. It was Dixie Howell passing to Don Hudson. This great combination beat Stanford in the 1935 Rose Bowl, 29 to 13. In the 1940s, Charlie Connerly dazzled enemy defenses by throwing 18 touchdowns for the Rebels of Ole Miss. Notre Dame's Johnny Lujak was an offensive machine, running and passing his way to the Heisman Trophy in 1947. Strong-armed quarterback Norm Van Brocklin led the Oregon Ducks to the Cotton Bowl in 1949. The Naval Academy showcased two of college football's greatest quarterbacks. George Welsh guided the midshipmen to the 1955 Sugar Bowl. However, no one had ever played the quarterback position quite like Roger Staubach. Roger the Dodger led the Middies to the 1964 Cotton Bowl. Staubach basically had average players and took a team and uh, went uh, you know, t uh, nine and two. And that's unbelievable uh, and superb player. And of course, we know what he did in the pros, but he's one of the greatest college players in his 63 season. I doubt if very few players had greater seasons than uh, Staubach did that year. He had such great scrambling ability, had a tremendous arm, highly competitive, intelligent, all those things. He was uh, he's a, just one of the best, obviously, the best football players that, uh, that I ever saw. We had a great football team. Uh, uh, pretty well dominated. Uh, we beat Michigan last time. They beat Notre Dame, and we just we were we were on a roll, and uh, and we went on to the Cotton Bowl and uh, lost a tough game in the Cotton Bowl to Texas. We were upset. Squeaker, 28 to six. No, we got beat. We got all my friends here. Now I'm, I'm a Texan now, living in Dallas, and uh, I, I I talked to a couple hundred thousand people who were personally at that game. Cotton Bowl only seats 75,000, so, so I am tired of hearing about that game, but. We lost, uh, we lost in the Cotton Bowl. We had a great season and beat Army. In the mid-1960s, Jerry Rome of Tulsa set many NCAA records, throwing to two outstanding receivers, Howard Twilley and Neil Sweeney. Gary Beban of UCLA passed his way to a Heisman Trophy in 1967. Alabama produced two superb passers in the snake, Kenny Stabler, and Joe Namath, who threw for more than 2,700 yards and 25 touchdowns in his college career. The 1970s featured Stanford's Heisman winner Jim Plunkett and Auburn's Pat Sullivan. Sullivan was voted the nation's top player in 1971. One of college football's most exciting quarterbacks was Mississippi's Archie Manning. Manning led Ole Miss to a Cotton Bowl victory in 1970 over Arkansas. Hall of Fame quarterbacks excelled in the late 70s. Notre Dame's comeback kid, Joe Montana, led the Irish to a national championship in 1978. 
and Dan Marino began his brilliant career at Pittsburgh in 1979. Moving into the late 70s and early 80s, Brigham Young took to the air with a passing tradition of excellence, featuring Gifford Nielsen, Mark Wilson, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, and Robbie Bosco. Stanford kept its traditional air attack alive and well behind the bazooka arm of John Elway. The Miami Hurricanes also showcased some outstanding quarterbacks, Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, and Vinny Testaverde. But perhaps the most exciting quarterback to ever play the game stood only five feet eight inches tall. His name, Doug Flutie of Boston College. He ended his college career by throwing for over 10,500 yards. Flutie's amazing heroics earned him the Heisman Trophy in 1984.